Just a few days ago, OpenAI made an exciting update by introducing web browsing and plugins to all ChatGPT Plus users. I thought it might be a good time to talk about some of the plugins I find useful and discuss their use cases in terms of web browsing, summarizing, coding, and more. Let's get started. First of all, we need to go to settings to make sure we turn on the beta features of web browsing and plugins before we can use them. First up, I want to talk about web browsing. I have to talk about Bing search, right? Because this week, Microsoft announced that they're bringing Bing to ChatGPT as their default search experience. So I'm pretty excited about that. I actually just got access to the Bing search. You can click browse with Bing search here. And that is actually the default search experience with ChatGPT. Let's give it a question. So in this question, it's actually three separate questions. Who succeeded Woody Johnson as the US ambassador to the United Kingdom? Which president did she serve under? And what is the current age of this president? I want to see if the Bing search was able to understand the logics of the question and answer each question in sequence. So the first search term, Woody Johnson's successor, US ambassador to the United Kingdom, this search term is correct. And it was actually, I think, reading the content from the Wikipedia. But as you can see here, the successor is actually Lampert, not Jane Harley. So it was actually not giving the right answer. Uh, even though the final answer is correct, it's Joe Biden. And Joe Biden is 80 years old. But it didn't actually get the first answer correctly. That was kind of interesting. One thing about uh, the default browsing experience is that you can't actually use the search experience with other plugins. For example, you can select different plugins together to use them uh, in the same run. And then the large language model can decide which one to, uh, to use for different tasks. And because the Bing search is not um, listed under the plugins, you, you actually can't use Bing search with the other plugins. If you are curious about the behavior of the previous default web browsing behavior, I recorded this part last night and the previous web browsing tool was able to answer the question correctly. There are at least two other plugins for web browsing. Let's try the first one. It's called KeyMate AI Search. This one didn't really give us good result. Uh, if we click on each of the box and see exactly what's happening. This tool is actually browsing a lot of the web links. It's browsing so many different web pages and try to find the answer, which is a little odd. And now let's try the third web browsing tool, WebPilot. WebPilot is also completely open source. Uh, I really like open source tools, so that's great. The answer for the first question is kind of wrong. Jane Harley, I think is the current ambassador, not the answer we're looking for. So even though this one didn't give Best correct answer is kind of close. At least Jane Harley was one of the US ambassadors. And if we take a look at what's going on under the hood, it went to this Wikipedia page of a list of ambassadors of the United States to United Kingdom and the title of the Wikipedia page and also the content of the whole Wikipedia page. What's more interesting though is the rules. Please strictly ad adhere to the information provided in the content. Use the language that user previously used or the language requested by the user. Respond to the user's request, which may include asking questions or request specific actions. If the user doesn't make a request, perform the following three tasks. Display the title, summarize the article, depending on the article, present three thought-provoking questions, which is interesting. And since we're talking about web browser, all of the three tools we just mentioned can also be used for summarizing web pages as well. I want to show you some examples. Here I'm using OpenAI's official web browser plugin and asking uh, ChatGPT to summarize this blog post in under 100 words. It was able to perform a pretty good job summarizing this blog post. It's funny, it listed eight citations which just direct to the same blog post. I think maybe because there are eight sentences, it's trying to give each sentence a citation, but but if they were smarter, they could combine them into one citation. Next up, we can try WebPilot. Again, you can see 
the same content and the rules structure here that you can see is generating a pretty good summary here as well. And now, and then we can try KeyMate AI search as well. Yeah, this one is doing a good job as well. So basically web page summarization seems to be doable for all those web browsing tools, which is not surprising. And then here's a new tool I want to introduce, which is called Link Reader. I find this tool useful as well because this tool not only works with web pages, it also works with PowerPoints, images, uh, Word document and others. Okay, so this tool I use a lot. It is super useful to summarize YouTube videos using this tool. It's called a box script. Here I'm asking ChatGPT or this plugin to summarize this video in 100 words. And I give the URL of my previous YouTube video, which is Hugging Face Transformers Agent. And then we get a summary of my video. Yeah, this is super, super useful to me because sometimes YouTube videos are way too long. I just want to see exactly what's in this video before I decide if I want to watch the whole video. There are three buttons here. This is interesting. This tool extracted channel information, video information, and also the transcripts of my video. There are three transcript chunks. Here is the first chunk, the second chunk, and the third chunk. Because my video is kind of long, it was able to break up my video into three chunks and then process it in the language model efficiently. Another tool that deals with video is called Chat with Video. Again, we can use the same prompt, ask it to summarize my YouTube video, and it does a good job as well. Next up, I want to talk about coding. I can't believe there is only one one coding plugin on ChatGPT, and that is called Notable. They have certainly grabbed the opportunity to showcase and promote their product through the ChatGPT plugins. I have not used Notable before this. I'm actually not familiar with their product, but since it's the only coding related plugin, I thought I have to give it a try. And the result is quite impressive. Just like what we did before, we chose the Notable plugin. And then I give it a prompt to load this data and give some descriptions of what I want to do with this data. Let's give it a try. It was able to tell me that I don't have a default project, so I need to go to Noble and create a project first. So here we go. Let's create a new project. Let's call it MoMA. By the way, you will need to change the privacy setting so that the ChatGPT can write into this notebook. So what ChatGPT did was that it was able to create this notebook called MoMA Artist Analysis, which we didn't give it a name. It was just providing the name by itself. And it was able to generate this whole notebook thing by itself. It's quite impressive. It has the code, the description, and also some visualizations as well. So in the beginning, I think it's the language model trying to understand the question and comes up with four steps for loading the data, cleaning the data, exploring the data, and visualizing the data. It was able to import the needed packages, pandas for reading the data. Here's what the data looks like. I like the UI here. This is interesting. It was able to give a description of the columns in the data frame. check for missing values. That was pretty good. Figure out how to handle the missing values for each column. Okay, now we have an overall description of the entire data set and a summarization of the data set. Now we're doing data exploration by analyzing the distribution of artists by gender but then you might need some data cleaning here. Okay, indeed, there are some inconsistencies in the gender column. We need to clean this up. Okay, so now is trying to convert the gender labels to lowercase. And the result looks really good. Yeah, the gender variable is cleaned up. Okay, now the next step is to analyze the distribution of artists by nationality. So overall, I think I'm really impressed with this plugin. It was able to generate a almost full report without any guidance. And I really like the UI here. The UI looks really simple and clean. Okay, so that's the notable plugin.
I really like it. Next, I want to talk about my favorite ChatGPT plugin. What is your favorite? Do you have a favorite? Um, my favorite is the Comic Finder plugin. I made some comics on robots, and it was able to return some good robots comics. Also, when you use ChatGPT plugins, you can use up to three plugins together. In this example, I used Comic Finder and WebPilot, and I was asking who is the UK Prime Minister? Find me a comic about him. WebPilot was able to go search the internet and find the answer of the current Prime Minister of the UK, and then Comic Finder was able to find some of the comics related to politics. <laughs> Even give a warning, please note that these comics may not directly reference Rishi Sunak, but they are related to politics and economics, which are relevant to his role as prime minister. There are, of course, a lot of other tools that people like to use. For example, Wolfman for computing, solving math equations, visualizing math equations, and so on. Uh, I have to say this is probably the most reliable tool here because Wolfman Alpha is kind of a well-known uh, mathematical tool on there. Zapier, a lot of people use it. It provides integration with over 5,000 apps. Uh, if you want to interact with your Google Sheets, Gmail, Salesforce, and others, you can use Zapier. Yeah, so there are a lot of tools about PDFs. I don't know why. Um, for example, Ask Your PDF is one of them. Link Reader is another one. Link Reader can also interact with the PDF as well. There's also another tool called Chat with PDF. Uh, it is somewhere in here. There are also several finance related tools for getting the market data and providing market insights. Yeah, so this is pretty exciting. My, I have, I have a lot of complaints about this. I don't like the UI. I'm not sure which tools are reliable, who made each of the tools, what are the ratings, who use what tool for what. But they are still at the early stages of development. I think they will all get better. In terms of the future of the plugins, I think the new Microsoft announcements uh, in the Microsoft Build Conference just elevated the plugins to a whole new level. So they're basically building and supporting the whole plugin ecosystem. Now developers can use one platform to build and submit plugins that will work across a lot of different interfaces, including ChatGPT, Bing, Dynamic 365 Copilot, Microsoft 365 Copilot, and Windows Copilot. Everything is super exciting. I think there will be a lot more AI plugins coming in the future. I hope they'll have better UIs and better user experience. So that's it for this video. Let me know if you find this helpful or if you have any feedback for me. Thank you. Bye.